Hey Joe. It was written by a man named Billy Roberts, who was born in 1936, and he was credited with writing it, but it was made popular by Jimi Hendrix. And uh, he made this song, Hey Joe, really popular. Anyway, the, the song is kind of ugly. You know, it's about a man who is extremely jealous, and he went out and uh, was asked, his name was Joe. And someone asked him, hey, Joe, where are you going? And uh, Joe had something to say about where he was going. He was jealous. His wife had done something wrong. I want to read to you the first command, the first uh, and second commandments and see if this relates. In chapter 20 of what they call Exodus, Shemoth, it says, And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of that which is in the Shamayim above, or which is in the Aretz beneath, or which is in the Mayim under the Aretz, that's the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am a jealous all, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing kindness to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commands. Well, that's, that's the jealous husband. He keeps saying to us, that's from the BYNV, if you're interested in picking up some of that. Um, look at it online. Amazon has some used ones you can get. And uh, we sell, you know, new ones here at Torazone.net. But anyway, the thing that I want to point out is that Yahuwah does not have what Christians are teaching you called unconditional love. He's very conditional. He doesn't want any messing around. He doesn't want you mixing or learning the ways of the heathen. He's very jealous. And he'll do far worse than whatever this song, Hey Joe, has to say. And I wanted to point that out. Who is it that, uh, who is it that um, the mother of harlots is guiding you to obey? This, this is about the mother of harlots. And I wanted to get you to read the text on the screen so it'll drill into your head and you can identify what you, what's happening to you. You've, you've grown drunk. You've been drinking the wine from the cup, the golden cup. And it's a test to see if you'll wake up. So hold on there, and we're going to switch the screen here. You can watch. Here we are, the mother of harlots. Who told you to go to the circus? Well, the circus is the, the, the things that, that people are calling the C-H-U-R-C-H. That's actually a, a word that's based upon um, K-I-R-K-E in the English, which is from Latin from a, a, a drug sorceress idol called C-I-R-C-E or K-I-R-K-E. These creeds you know, lists of beliefs and sacraments, rituals, holy water, and other strange fire dominate the minds of the circus goers. They're skilled in every form of pagan idolatry. People who meet at the circus practice their pastor's traditions and do not know Yahusha or walk anything like him. That's why the Nazarene are now awakening. And just as we responded to the truth, some of them will also awaken through our message. Pray to the master of the harvest to increase the workers. 
the obedient enrage the dragon. See Revelation 12, 17. It says this, those obeying the commandments of Elohim and holding to the testimony of Yahushua. But also focus on Revelation 22. Notice how the translators whitewash the message at Revelation 22:14 to keep people confused and disobedient. They have become drunk on the wine of Babel, the great mother of harlots. The prophet they call Jeremiah, Yermiyahu, chapter 51, verse 7. Babel was a golden cup in the hand of Yahuwah, making drunk all the arrests. That's earth. The nations drank her wine, and that is why the nations went, went mad. Yehuchanan, or they call John, 14, verse 21. He who possesses my commands and guards them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. This is just a depiction of what's happening in reality. The NIV says, Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Washing their robes. They change the words. This is what it really says in translation. Blessed are those doing his commandments, so that the authority shall be theirs to the tree of life and to enter through the gates into the city. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next exciting one. Bye. Thank you.